Hi, and we're back in the garage. This is the time of the year where I try and get as much of my maintenance done as possible, and um, this year's no different to any other. About 12 months ago, 12, 14 months ago, we upgraded all the front suspension on the van. We put a five ton beam in there, and we also put a beam. We put a five ton leaf spring. People keep correcting me. Keep calling it a torsion beam. I'm going back to the old Beetle days. <laughs> But anyway, we put a five ton leaf spring in the front of there and we also upgraded with some B6 Bilstein dampers. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Apart from one thing, there's a little knock and this little knock is only when we hit certain parts of the road, um, like little ramps in the road, but it's a very, it's a very metallic thud. Now, we couldn't work out what it is um basically started as soon as I did it and we never had that noise beforehand so I've inspected the dampers there's nothing there um, I have had a good look around all the front end there was nothing there so I did a bit of investigating and the only thing that I found that we didn't do was change the rubbers now the rubbers for the five ton spring are exactly the same to look at but they have a different part number and all I can think is this is a harder compound so this week's video, we're going to be swapping them out and we're going to be doing a little squeak on my brakes as well. Um, all last summer, if you ever met us or if we drove past you, you would have heard my brakes squealing. Um, just a little chirp, but pisses me right off. So it's got to get done this time. Anyway, let's get stuck into the video. So this here is the five ton beam that we put in at the beginning of last year. There's a bush under there, you can see the bottom of it there. There's one in this end here, that's shaped like a shoe. And then above here, there's actually another one. And that, they're the ones that are difficult to, to change because if you're putting the beam in, you end up, when you're putting the beam in, you end up knocking them out. So that was a problem I had last year. Um, so this year, hopefully we'll be able to do that. I'm not going to drop these completely out, I don't think. I'll drop them down a little bit. Last time I took them completely out. But this time I'll just drop them down enough to remove the, the to replace the rubbers. Well, things aren't going to plan. First two bolts. Both sheared off. Look at that. So, what should have been a quick job. I now need to strip out the damper. Well, I'll show you. I now need to take the caliper off so I can get the damper bolt, the, the shocker bolts. Um, I'm just gutted. <laughs> so, brake caliper off, damper off. That'll allow me access into there. I can drop this down. I can drop the hub down this way. That'll allow me to drill out the two bolts that have sheared off. And then I get the lovely task of trying to find them two new bolts. But we have a part number here on that plate. Um, let's see if you can see that. Look just down there. There's a part number. So I'll, have just, I'll just ring up tomorrow and get two bolts. I'm going to try the other side. I've put some plus gas on them. Um, something I didn't do on this side. So, like I say, I'll phone up tomorrow. I'll probably end up getting four new bolts for there because if, if these two have gone, there's a likelihood the other two are gonna go. <sighs> just just not what I needed, you know. It's a straightforward little job and we're gonna be stuck now drilling out and tapping and making sure that we, we can get that stud out. And it's solid as well. It's not like I can drill through and it's a it needs bottomed. So that's where we are. Absolutely gutted. <laughs> Must have a ghost in here. I just heard something rattling over there. Okay, the other night we snapped a few bolts. Um, like most people, tinker, you will have a box of bolts and stuff you can't throw away. But that's all well and good, but something you need to consider. The bolts that are fitted to this vehicle are obviously specified so they're to a certain grade now that information is on the back of 90% of all your bolts 
It should be on every bolt, really, or set screw. But on some, it isn't. So I'm going to show you one that's clearly stamped. And can you see that? Try and zoom in. That's the information there. So on the bottom, there's two numbers, 8.8. .8. So that there is a standard run-of-the-mill bolt. The ones that snapped off my van, so let's catch this on the light. On the bottom there, I've had to sand this back, but you can see it says 10.9. That is a much higher grade of bolt than what I had lying in my box. These bolts may look great. They may get me away for a little while. But do I really want to run the risk of putting this on my front steering suspension? No, I don't. So I will be ordering some 10.9s. Um, unless I find some in this box. This box here is what I've collected from VWs over the years. Visits to scrapyards. But I will be looking at the grade of bolt that I put back in. Obviously... Them two that snapped, um, I'm going to still drill them out, but we need to make sure that we're putting the right stuff back in there. And it's something a lot of people won't consider. They'll just see a set screw as a set screw, and a you know, or a bolt, however you want to call it. They'll just see a bolt as a bolt, but some bolts are stronger than the other than others. And that that number really relates to how much weight and force it can take before it'll shear off. So the higher the number, the greater the shear force. And it's time to start knocking these, getting these snapped studs out. First things first, expose what's left of the stud. A bit of rust in there again. See in there now we can see the center of them two studs. We'll get them punched and we'll start drilling them out. I'm gonna drill them out in stages, small drill bit to start with, then a medium, then a large, and that's what the stud extractor will work at. That'll go in at that. So a bit awkward with this shocker in the way, but it's where do you stop stripping out? That. Sometimes where the shear, it's really hard to get a punch. You have to move around come out of a couple of angles just to get the punch centered. Right, that'll do. So let the fun begin. Have a little look. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. We're quite a way in there now. I'd say we're a good 10, 15 million. Quite central. Um, that should allow the stud extractor when we go to the next step to remove that. Because what we're doing here as well is we're generating heat. That should be helping us loosen things up as well. Look at the length of that swath. Nine. It's like, ooh, it's like a spring. That was a good nine inches long there. Just so you can see, that's the shared bolt. And that's one full length one. So I'd say we've got a good, what's uh, 30 mil, 25, 30 mil to drill out in there. I don't think we're far off that now. So just taking my time, make sure that we don't end up breaking the bit. No. <laughs> what did I say I didn't want to do? I've ended up doing shit. Right. <clears throat> oh. 
so that's moving the bolt by the sounds of it. The stud anyway, what's left of the, the bolt. It. Not good. Wow. I've had my money's worth out of that. I've had that about 30 years. Quite shocked that it's broke. But I am. I was dogging it to be honest. I think what we'll do is we'll back this off. And drill it out a little bit more. Try and get a bit more heat into the job. Hopefully that'll loosen up what we've got there. Shite. Shizen. So we're up to a 5.5 there. We'll uh, just take that through gradual. God, what luck am I having today? I can't believe that just snapped off then. That is all so far in. <sighs> right, we got it out. <laughs> so maybe luck is on my side today. Doesn't feel like it, but let's go. We'll try again. Quite tight down. <clears throat> I might be just backing this off. the stud extractor but I think it is just the stud extractor I'm backing off but let's see what's happening Does not sound good. This is it's bizarre how stuck these are. It's like they're welded in. I don't know if we've got any movement there whatsoever. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> One hand, I want to just keep going. On the other hand, I don't want to break the stud extractor. That stops us dead in our tracks, to be honest. I'm hoping, hoping what we're doing is helping release it. Oh, that's so tight. Now let's go back again. We'll take the stud out and we'll try and step it up again with the drill. Well.
that doesn't want to come out either. Go back to my old favourite, my reliable um, plus gas. Should have maybe put some of this on previous to drilling, but what we'll do is we'll fill up these holes now, give it 10 minutes, and then try and take these studs out. See you in 10. Right, this is the next one up. This is a 7mm, that's about as big as we can go. If you look there, that is very close to the thread width. So we'll have to go really clever with this one, really steady. We are pretty central. I don't want to damage the threads in this piece. Right, we've drilled that. We've drilled that out to seven mil. I forgot to turn the camera back on, but anyway, we've now gone onto the big, the big boy. I don't even know what size this is, but anyway, this is the biggest stud extractor I own. Um, if this doesn't work, I don't know what we're gonna do. Oh. I'm not sure if this is working at all. Well, the fact that has snapped off in there kind of uh, <laughs> it's made a decision for me that I didn't want to make. I'm going to have to go and buy um, buy one of them arms. Whatever happens, I'm going to have to take it off. Um, I can't obviously remove it there. I don't know how I'm going to get that stud extractor out. Um, it's well in. You know, to shear that off. I didn't, I didn't think that would happen, to be honest. <sighs> fed up. Absolutely fed up. That's a donkey of a job, that. that's a good part, just wasted because two bolts shared off in it. But it is what it is, we'll have to, we'll have to repair them, uh, replace them. At least it's just one side, it's not both. <laughs> I suppose there's that in it, isn't there? Right, let's, let's take it off anyway and uh, see where we're at. Evening. Blue skies. <sighs> but it's frosty as well. Right, little update. Last night, that's as far as we go. We stripped everything out, both sides. Last night, I sat on the internet and I looked around. Um, I had a little chat with a few of you guys out there. Jim um, and Neil, we discussed <laughs> the options and what was available to me out there. So I sat on the internet and I, f I fried my own brain. I found um, lower arms for 56 quid, right up to 500 pound. Um, obviously, I waited till Monday, which is Monday today. Um, I rang around Mercedes, I rang around Sicily Motors, um, and another place that I use, at Carlisle, and they all come back with ridiculous prices. Uh, Mercedes was 500 quid, and then uh, the other place that we use, they were. They were 230 and all these are plus VAT mind. 
So I went out on the internet, um, I looked around, and obviously I found much cheaper, but I couldn't guarantee the quality. So one of the companies Jim had recommended is Delphi, and I've used their stuff before. It's got a two year guarantee with it, so if anything's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong within the first couple of years, I think. So we've gone down the route of Delphi. Now, Jim put me out to a company who had supplied him recently, I managed to get them cheaper through Autodoc, but didn't believe I was buying off Autodoc. And this is some little trick they do. They must have lots of company names out there where they pretend to be British based or based in this country. And when you click on the link and get through to the end, your invoice comes and it's Autodoc. So just <laughs> naughty Autodoc, but it's happening, people. Just be wary because I've bought stuff off Autodoc before and it took a number of days to arrive so it's monday i'm going to wrap this video up <laughs> because i don't know when the parts are going to arrive but that's the situation we're in the van stripped out we're going to put new parts on um this isn't cheap now it's there's going to be well over 350 quid worth of new parts going on there um still got to go to carlisle and buy the bolts pick them up unless I can get some kind soul to do it for me but uh, don't think that'll happen so four new bolts for the front as well two for underneath two new control arms six new rubbers and hopefully no more knocking anyway that's going to be in the next video there's just so much happened in this one um, I'm going to have to call it a day I'm going to try and keep these videos to what I actually do through the week within one week this is now spreading into two so anyway thanks for watching and we'll catch up soon but enjoy the weather i'm gutted because i can't get out in the van i really am gutted um it's a lovely night tonight i would have liked to have been down on the beach with the camera with the drone just just messing about but we are where we are We've got to get this right to get us through the next couple of years through this summer through next summer Anyway, I gave her a wash yesterday just to cheer myself up. Here, I'll let you have a look. Looking nice and shiny. Just ignore that bit. Just pretend there's a wheel there and it isn't jacked up. <laughs> you guys have a great week and we'll see you next weekend. Oh, by the way, we're doing a thing. We're, uh, we're having our first ever meetup. Um, for those of you that are in the Facebook group, I offer it to you guys and uh, we're all very, very eager for me to do it. So we've done it. We're having a van meet on the 19th and 20th of May at the Wee Chief, which is our little bolt hall. We go there quite a lot. It's a lovely little campsite and we've got half of it all to ourselves. So looking forward to that. Um, I think it's going to be brilliant. I think it really is going to be brilliant. We announced it yesterday and it's nearly full. The site is nearly full. I think we're 80% there in one day. So anybody that's interested in coming, drop them, drop the Wee Chief a line, uh, have a look at our Facebook page and you'll see on there, all the details are there. I know it's a funny number, it's only got 10 digits. A lot of people have commented on that. But it's a special number for a special location. Right, we'll see you later. Thank you for your continued support. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing, liking and sharing with your friends. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.